In the last video I spoke about the constants of CNC accuracy while measuring and testing those on my CNC machine. At the end of the video I surfaced the wasteboard in a way that exposed the nod and tilt in the Z axis but I glossed over how to remove those. In theory you could use your engineer square and the process of surfacing the wasteboard to slowly make adjustments and eliminate those from the Z axis assembly. But trial and error isn't always the easiest way to work. And you may not have much of a wasteboard if you do this several times. In this video, I'm going to really look at the Z-axis assembly and how to set the spindle and ultimately install it. A more in-depth description will be available in the manual once that's finished, which I'll link to everywhere. So on with the show. So I've taken the Z-spindle off the smaller CNC machine uh, just to do some tests to see how true the collet is being held along the actual axis and after a bit of thinking I've finally thought of a way of using the granite surface, this engineer's straight edge and the dial gauge on a stand to check how true this is. So the first thing is to sit the z-axis onto the granite surface <coughs> and it's just big enough to sit with the FK12 end and the stepper end on the surface. The uh, profile is being held up. In a previous video, which I'll link to somewhere up here, um, I showed how I assembled the x-axis and used the movement of the uh, ball screw to pull the linear rails parallel uh, so I'm not going to repeat that, um, but I'm pretty confident that that is in line. This square is pretty parallel on either face. If I measure up here, I'm getting 37.09, that's 37.11, that's 37.10. So you're talking about 0 0.02 of a mil off along the length, which is adequate for me. If I place that along there, this lines up with the two outer plates and gives me a parallel face to then set up the dial gauge to take a reading. And if I move across, I can see oops, I'm just over 0.1 of a mil off along the edge. What I'm going to do is take the readings from the top and the bottom and then I'm going to wind the ball screw back and then measure from the same points further along to see if they're the same. Okay so it's not consistent but it's less than 0 0.16 in the middle 0 0.12 at the bottom and 0 0.07 at the top that's the sort of slight deviation in the plate so obviously the rails are not perfectly lined up what I'm going to do is take the spindle off um, and the spindle plates and loosen this all up and see if I can reduce that down a little just to make accessing the screws a little easier, I'm going to take off the spindle before loosening all the machine screws holding the spindle plate to the linear rail carriage blocks. I then twist the plate counterclockwise ever so slightly to compensate before retightening. I managed to knock off 0.06mm off the twist, which is barely anything. Maybe I could have got this first time round had I used a dial gauge to begin with, but then again the method I use without the dial gauge is obviously pretty effective to get the initial level of accuracy. So it really depends on what tools you have, how much time you can spend, and to what level of accuracy you want to work to. So I've knocked off about 0.7 of a mil on the middle. I'm just going to check the bottom. So that's 0 0.06 off now. Uh, it's been an improvement all the way along. Uh. I then loosen the spindle mount and return the spindle, locking it in place. The cylindrical shaft of the spindle pulls the two mounts in line. 
I can then flip everything around and raise the engineer straight edge with a parallel piece of Velcro mat so I can clamp that to the spindle mount. The spindle and the engineer straight edge should now be aligned. I also raised the dial gauge onto another piece of Velcro mat so the magnetic base was able to run along the straight edge. You can see the wiggle from there. So now what I need to do is pivot the rest of the assembly until the sides line up. Okay, it just occurred to me I can use the magnet to clamp onto this, which is making it a little bit easier. With the dial gauge's plunger set to read from the side of the Z spindle plate, I can now pivot the rest of the assembly until the spindle mount and the Z plate line up. To help with the process, I magnetise the base so it's held onto the straight edge with the dial gauge's plunger exactly where I need to take the measurement. The aim is to get the measurements from the top and bottom of the plates to almost identical amounts. I tighten the machine screws to fasten the spindle mount and then flip everything around to take a reading from a tool shaft in the spindle collet. With the engineer straight edge along the assembly and the dial gauge pressed against that, I can see the tool is off by 0.05 millimeters over a length of 25 mil. This is about as good as I can get it. The next step is to install the spindle and use a tramming arm to make sure it is square to the wasteboard. So this is something I cut out uh, from some of the sea tool with an older machine. And the idea is that that allows me to clamp the dog gauge onto the spindle. I began by semi-tightening the machine screw so I could still pivot the spindle assembly along the y-axis. The aim with the dial gauge is to get the same measurement on either side of the spindle by gently pivoting the z-axis assembly. After lots of toing and froing, I managed to get the spindle off by 0.05mm over a 28cm diameter between the left and right sides. When I was happy with the final position, I fully tightened the uppermost two machine screws. I can now do the same along the y-axis. There is a nod in the spindle assembly, which is quite normal because of the leverage effect the overhanging weight has. And to compensate for this, I used thin 0.3 mm shim washers to pack out the bottom of the spindle assembly against the carriage plate. There's just enough play in the plate to pull forward by hand and squeeze the shims in. Okay, that's less than 0.1 of a mil off over that distance. Setting the y-axis has thrown the x-axis off to just under 0.2 millimeters. These are really small amounts. Bear in mind that these readings are also taken from a very large diameter. And when you scale those down to the average tool, I'll be using between 4 to 8 millimeters. That angle will be imperceptible to the human eye. So don't drive yourself mad trying to get it any lower. On the subject of tramming jigs, I went and designed a 3D printable version. I felt like I needed one dedicated to the job and also really enjoy designing things to be 3D printed. It is obviously possible to use the arm of a magnetic stand and a single dial gauge as I was doing on screen, but I'm hoping that once this tool is set up correctly, it would be a lot quicker to install the spindle, but also periodically check. I'm curious how long tramming the spindle will last. So with this jig, I can take readings over several hours, days, or even weeks of machining and that data will eventually contribute to a recommended maintenance schedule for the machine I've designed and written manual for. Making the model was also a welcome distraction from the manual, which is very close to being finished. Anyway, I'm going to leave this video here. There will be a few 3D printing reviews coming out in the near future as I'm being sent some new machines. I'm not sure if I have the space to do this, but we'll see what we can do. I'm looking forward to doing them and to learn new things from those technologies which I might be able to apply to this CNC project. Thanks again for watching and to my patrons for their continued support. If you want to see images of some of the things I'm working on before the videos are released, do check out my Instagram page which I'll link to in the description below. And for the rest of you, you'll see me back here very soon.